To those who are constantly devoted to serving me with love, I give the understanding of the absolute truth by which they can come to me. Bhagavad Gita 10.10 So someone may claim that every one of us is God, or I am God, but nobody can claim that I am supreme, I am the supreme God. That is not possible. Krishna alone can claim that. Matat parataram nanyat kinchidasti dhananjaya. My dear dhananjaya, there is no personality superior to me. Bhagavad Gita 7 7. He claimed that, and then he proved it by displaying his universal form to Arjuna and all the warriors assembled there in the battlefield. So God cannot be manufactured artificially. God is God and we are all subservient to him. We cannot display the universal form. We cannot perform all the superhuman activities that Krishna performed. So God cannot be manufactured by so-called meditation and mystic power. You can get some of the insignificant powers by mystic yoga, but you do not know how much more powerful than you God is. You don't know. Therefore, when a foolish person gets a little power, he thinks that he has become God. He does not know how much more powerful God is. So, therefore, the Shastra says, you may be God in your own atmosphere, in your own jurisdiction, and you may think that you are God. And everyone actually thinks like that. But the Supreme God is Krishna. In the Upanishads, it is said, that God is also a person like you and me. Nityo nityanang chetanash chetananang eko bahunang yo vididhati kaman Among all the eternal conscious beings, there is one who supplies the needs of everyone else. The wise souls who worship him in his abode attain everlasting peace. Others cannot. Kata Upanishad 2.2.13 but his personality is different from your personality or my personality. What is that difference? Eko bohunang yo vididhati kaman. He supplies all the necessities of all other personalities. That is the difference. God is supplying us food. This conception is there in the Bible. God, give us our daily bread. Accepting that we are getting all our necessities from God is intelligent. At least, one who thinks like that has approached God. He is thinking of God. But one day when he becomes advanced, he will not ask anything more from God. He already knows that, why shall I bother God? He is already supplying everyone food, so why shall I ask him for food? My food is already there. All my necessities are there. Let me serve him. That is higher intelligence. Why should I ask food from God? God is supplying food to the cats, dogs, ants, elephants, and whales, and he will not supply me? And especially when I engage myself in his service? This is spiritual intelligence. Bahunam jangmana mante jnanavang mang prapadyate Vasudeva Sarvamiti Samahatma Sudulabaha. After many births and deaths, one who is actually in knowledge surrenders unto me, knowing me to be the cause of all causes and all that is. Such a great soul is very rare. Bhagavad Gita 719. So we are not meant to beg the necessities of life from God or from anyone else. God is automatically supplying the necessities of every living being. We are meant to engage in transcendental service to God. That is the difference between the beginning of spiritual life and the advanced stages. The beginner wants to get something from God, but the advanced devotee simply wants to serve God. So if you serve God, beginning from chanting his holy name, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, or any name of God, then gradually you will progress from the stage of Brahman realization 
through Paramatma realization to Bhagavan realization. Each stage is a new dimension of understanding God. This is the path of the esoteric teaching. So we are contemplating the three stages of transcendental realization, Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. And the comparison to the three dimensions is a very good